Hey, what's going on guys? Koma Kikins here. In this video we're going to be implementing a very important function called set occupancies and it would be responsible for setting appropriate occupancies along the process of generating pre-calculated attack tables for sliding pieces. So without further ado, let me just start implementing it and I'll try to explain how exactly it works along the way. So let's define the set occupancies function here and it would be the u64 unsigned long long bit board type function let's call it set occupancy and it would be taken up to three arguments so the very first one we'll call just index uh, because I, I can't really find the more proper name for this variable uh, you'll see how it works later on then we need to take the argument uh, that is is the number of bits uh, uh, if, so if we take uh, an attack mask for uh, for a bishop or rook in some sort of a uh, uh, on a given square and it and return just just return the attack mask there would be the number of bits available so this is the exact uh, argument to take uh, that number so I call this bits in mask and finally we need to take the u64 attack mask variable uh, that would be taking the uh, actual response from the function uh, asking uh, asking to get as asking to, ma to mask uh, the relevant occupancy squares for a for a current given piece either bishop or rook so uh, the very first thing to consider uh, let's uh, we need to initialize the occupancy map itself so let's call this occupancy map and create the u64 occupancy variable here and initialize this to zero unsigned long long and at the very end we'll need to return occupancy map like this so I can simply say return occupancy this is it uh, and now we need to loop over uh, the range uh, over the range of bits within attack mask so it's much easier <laughs> to show rather than to explain so we can simply say like for int count equals to zero and count is less than this number uh, bits in mask and count plus plus now the next thing to consider we need to get the index of uh, the less significant first bit uh, within our attack mask and then populate uh, and then pop that bit so just literally reset that bit and doing this one by one with all the bits out there so I can simply say like uh, get less significant first bit uh, first bit index uh, of attack mask and I just create the variable called square and it would be equal to get less significant first bit uh, index and I'm passing this attack map as an argument and another very essential step uh, because otherwise it's not going to be working really we need to pop a uh, less significant first bit in attack map so we need simply to say pop bit i'm making use of the mm, macro that we've created in the very beginning of this series and i'm passing the attack attack map as the first argument and this square is actually the particular bit uh, to, to, to reset actually and now we need simply to make sure that mm, occupancy is on board and in order to ask this we can simply say if index uh, it was ended with one left shifted to the count uh, in this case, we want to um, populate occupancy map 
or update the occupancy map. And, and we can simply say occupancy uh, bitwise or equals one unsigned loan loan left shifted on the number whatever is available within our square. And this is it. So now we'll test this function and when you when you realize how it works visually it would be really easy to understand like kind of the purpose of this sort of a function so let me now uh, get rid of all this stuff because we don't really need this anymore and we want to print the bitboard uh, well let, let's actually generate uh, in it occupancy let's just generate some occupancy in separate so u64 occupancy would be equal to set occupancy and we want to print this occupancy here and the index will start from zero and then we need to uh, count bits of so we actually need to mask mm, we need to mask uh, piece tax at given square so let's create the attack mask variable here and let's say mask well let's start with the rook attack so let's say mask rook attacks and let's do it on the square say a1 so count bits uh, within this uh, and yeah obviously this should be the type of bitboard so u64 and now let's count the bits in our attack mask and also we want to pass this attack mask variable itself okay so uh, now I just want to open the terminal in the current working directory and by typing make debug and I want to compile the service and if it compiles I would, I, I would like to run this wire calling the BBC which stands for Bitboard Chess binary executable uh, okay attack map some, some wrong name for a variable uh, uh, not attack map but attack mask sorry Okay, excuse me, 466, oh, <laughs> I have no idea, uh, I have no idea why did I call this attack map, uh, I meant attack mask, okay, and with the index of zero we have an empty bit board which is okay, and uh, at index of 400 and the four thousands or oh, literally 4095 uh that's a bit tricky to explain uh where this uh <laughs> where this uh integer comes from but assuming this uh visual uh <laughs> representation i hope it, it would be a bit more clear uh so the idea behind this index is to cover the range of possible occupancies uh within the bit board so uh you remember that we don't hit the board ash when dealing with the mask so uh, obviously uh, no no occupied bits are about to be right over in there but if we talk about uh the various variations for for occupancies they vary from no occupancies to okay to, uh, every square is getting occupied basically uh and if we just try to go for like zero and then we just go to one well actually uh we can do this within the loop and let me better try to show you this so loop over occupancy indices uh Okay, I'm not sure if I spelled indices word correctly, sorry if not. So let's say for int index equals to zero, index is less than 495, uh, 96, sorry, and index plus plus. And here 
uh, we just want well actually we can actually use the print bit board here already so print bit board and taking care of our occupancies okay uh, okay and here we want to use our index and also now what now it would obviously print really lots of occupancies available but just to give you an idea how it works step by step i would like to add one little more uh, line here so i just want to get user input to pause the execution in order to give you an idea of how this bit board how, how, how the uh, occupancy variations are changing. So this is how the occupancy variations are actually changing. Uh, I, I, needless to say that <laughs> uh, if you don't really understand how it works, it seems like a little bit of a magic. So just try to make it a little bit faster. So it, it just goes through all the possible no uh, I don't want to say all the possible I mean all, all the occupancy variations we need actually here and this occupancies would later on serve in order to generate the so-called magic in uh, magic uh, indices so we would have been multiplying the this numbers represent uh, this numbers representing the uh, bitboard occupancies. Uh, we would have been multiplying them by uh, so-called magic numbers uh, that would have been generated by they would have been generated later on, let's say like this. And after uh, uh, we would have be shifting uh, uh, the result to 64 uh, which is the number of squares minus uh, the number of relevant bits for a current given piece uh, occupying a given square uh, and th there are there are some pre-calculated uh, pre-calculated uh, arrays for doing that so again like it would be easier to show you that visually rather than to explain well at least to me basically so uh, I hope it's quite pretty clear like uh, how exactly this set occupancy function works so uh, the only thing uh, I want to show you more regarding this stuff is actually um, trying to make the same but for for a bishop so if we just try to mask uh, bishop attacks well uh, also obviously also let's have a look let's have a quick look at well uh, uh, this range might be uh, might vary from time to depending on square so I just want to set this to well let's say stand this to 100 just just to, to give an idea regarding the, the, the first few variations available let's put a rook on d4 and you see like again we're generating some different occupancies available well all, only 100 of those so uh we would be uh calculating the number uh that would be responsible for the maximum uh, uh maximal uh maximum index available uh when uh, we would be actually initializing our rook and bishop attack tables but for now i'm just using some custom uh integers here just to give you an idea just to give you a visual idea of how it works and let's and now let's try to to mask the bishop attacks and uh, to, to mask the bishop attacks as well and it would be doing something similar but you see like uh, already it regards the bishop attacks so gen it's generating the various attacks for a bishop standing on d4 uh, this now uh, at this particular uh, case so again like we would be generating this number whatever it would be later on dynamically within the initialization routine for our uh, magic bit boards uh, uh, for, for our uh, slatter piece attack tables powered by the magic bit boards well, okay guys so this is it for this video and I hope you learned something interesting out of it 
uh, and I hope that at least mm, maybe not how exactly this occupancy set occupancy function works but at least w what is this needed for uh, comes a little bit more clear after after this video and this is again like this is the core function that we would have been making use of in order to initialize the pre-calculated attack tables for rooks and bishops so this is it from my side thanks for watching and thanks for supporting me following this series taking the time paying attention to my work i really appreciate that and this motivates me uh, going on and on basically along this series so again like wish you all the best guys until next time and take care